So this is just going to be a quick video covering um, my Japanese skiving knife and how I use it. So this one. Uh, this isn't necessarily me telling you how to use a Japanese skiving knife. It's more how I use it. Um, so I'm going to... I've got this piece of oak back tanned strip here. I'm going to use to demonstrate on because usually for me I'd be I work for my smaller goods on with much thinner leather um, and I bond pieces together and then cut them when they're bonded but rather than bonding a load of stuff up just to do this demonstration I'm just going to use a thicker piece so this is 5mm uh, oak backed and um, so the first thing is hold, so there's a few different ways that you can use the knife. So it is a skiving knife, um, so its prim primary job is to skive, um, but the Japanese use them for everything, like a lot of them use just the one knife for all the cutting that they need to do for the leather work. Um, so this is a right handed knife. Um, they come in right and left hand and it, it depends which side the handle goes up. So this knife is made to be held in the right hand um, with the bevel facing this way and that's a thing that usually confuses people. Um, so when if I'm cutting a piece of leather, if I'm cutting along a line, I will end up cutting this way with the bevel facing the piece that I, I want to keep. Uh, and most people seem to think that you want the flat against the piece that you want to keep because you're trying to get a line that's directly up and down, perfectly, um, not parallel, the other one, perpendicular. Um, but the way that your arm actually works and the way that you hold the knife, so if I if I just hold my arm out in front of me in a, in a position that's comfy, the cutting motion that we're doing is moving the the elbow and keeping the arm and wrist fairly straight um, and then if you put a knife in that hand you realize the uh, the knife isn't actually straight um, to put the knife straight you have to twist your arm slightly and then as you pull pull your wrist your elbow back as you're doing a cut you have to keep compensating to keep the knife straight up and it's actually a really awkward movement um, so this is made so that you you hold it in what's more of a natural place. You keep the front bevel here perpendicular. And then as you pull it back, you watch that bevel and make sure that you're keeping it straight up and down. And it's just much more natural arm movement. So the first way that I use this knife is like this. So you hold it, you, you hold it like this. Um, like I say, this has a... This has a nice little um, thumb notch in the top that I put into it. Um, this was just a flat round um, with quite sharp corners um, and it was quite uncomfortable to have your thumb up. I know some people don't You put the thumb on the top and they hold it more like this, um, but I quite like holding it like this. I know people that even hold it like this, and hold the blade and don't even hold the handle. So if I was doing a straight cut, of this off. It's actually got a line on here for me to follow. So we'll just scratch a line in there. That's a deep mill spacing. So I wanted to cut this. I place it in the end right there, you push the one corner down, you keep the one corner above the work, you you basically watch this front corner to follow the line and the back end of the blade will follow where this front corner goes. So what I'm looking at is this front bevel and making sure it's straight up and down. And I'll just I'll I'll use that front corner to follow the line.
and then one cut all the way through like this this knife is sharp as anything like no issue that's quite a dense hard leather um, it's usually quite difficult to cut uh, and that you saw how easy that was so the other way um, and the primary use of this knife because it is a skiving knife is for skiving and skiving is thinning down the edges of leather um, so that if you've got multiple layers and you've got an edge that goes in another one you can't see it from the top or thinning down edges so your edges aren't so thick when you've got layers built up um, for folding if you're doing a belt and you're wanting to f you need to fold the end over um, you thin that down because if you're making a belt out of something this thick you can't actually get a decent bend so you you thin it down um, and the way that you do that so I actually want my marble for this rather than my wood so you hold, for that you hold the knife in your hand like this um, you want your two fingers on the top um, to have um, nice pressure and uh, you're cutting um, forward like this. Some people like to have a left handed knife um, for beveling in the right hand and essentially that would mean that you'd be um, skiving bevel down so you'd, you'd you'd be skiving this way um, and the upside of that is because this this angled bevel you can actually get a flatter skive without having to get closer to your marble because you're, you're limited on how close down you can get to get a nice um, skive so like here my hand is on the marble and if I put that down that's the sort of from the bottom of here is so the marble is the, the shallowest angle I can get in this configuration. Whereas if I do it here, that bevel is actually flat with the marble. That would that would give me a that would literally cut the end off rather than actually skiving. So I can lift it up and still get quite a shallow angle, but I've got quite a lot of space. Um, the way I get around that because I've only got the one knife and I use it for cutting um, and trimming as well so that's why I have a right handed one because it makes more sense is um, I will just hang the piece off the end of my marble and then I can I can literally get as low as I, I need to like it doesn't matter because my hand has all the space um, and skiving is literally just doing that so you can see there's um, I don't know if you can see because the focus essentially just a long beveled cut and I can do them even longer than that I can get right down and really really make a long cut um, and you can also do that along long edges it doesn't have to be a strap like that so if I wanted to do it along a long edge like this um, it's a case of putting it in and moving in, in this sort of sideways movement and then I can move all the way along the edge that I want to thin you can see that's taken off it, that's a very shallow angle because uh, this is quite thick leather um, I could pull it all the way back here and get a thinner edge because I've probably taken a millimetre off that edge going in at an angle like that obviously for something like this if I actually wanted to thin it down I'd be going in at a much higher angle it just shows what you can do uh, with the knife um, and then the last thing that I do so if I am cutting a piece
So let's cut this end off that I've just skived. So let's say this, this was a, a much more complicated piece with layers built up and I'm trimming an edge so that everything's flush. Um, if I do get it wrong and I cut like that, let's see, get that to focus on this. There we go. So you can see that's not perpendicular, there's an angle to it. And imagine this is a few layers built up that are glued together and stitched. This just gives me the thickness without having to do that. So the other thing that I can do is once everything's sort of built up like this, um, and I've trimmed it, but I've trimmed it and I've not actually got my angle right from my cut, is you can um, use it as a sort of a plane you can get you can get small planes to do this with um, but you can just use the skiving knife for it as well so if I hold it my piece upright like this and I can see the angle I can come in with my knife flat and I tend to hold the blade like this for this cut and I can just take off that triangle And if there's any unevenness in the edges, if there's one layer that's ever so slightly proud, you can just come in and just take the tiniest little bit off. As long as your knife is sharp. And then if this will focus, you can see that end is now totally like fully square. Um, so it's quite useful for that. So that's the three ways that I use the knife really, um, upright like this and I'm moving my arm and my wrist sort of steers it a little bit and what I'm looking at is this front corner and this bevel to make sure it's upright and I'm moving my elbow back to the side so I cut on a slight angle, um, I can't cut directly towards myself because obviously my body is in the way so you, you always want to be cutting at this sort of um, just a slight angle to the side so that your elbow's got a really nice movement um, and you can really concentrate on keeping that bevel upright. And then the other way is in the hand like this with your skiving cuts which uh, you do on your marble because if I did it on this I'd just dig straight into the wood. And then there's uh, your trimming uh, sort of planing cuts where you can clean up edges by holding the knife like this. So it's a really versatile knife. This is why I say a lot of Japanese makers have a Japanese skiving knife and nothing else. Because um, you can do a lot of things with a Japanese skiving knife. Uh, you can even use it for beveling if you really want to. So uh, beveling is taking off the sharp corners off an edge. Um, and you have edge bevelers like this one which you run down edges and it takes off the corner. This is quite a small one. So you can see it just takes off the corner. You can actually, there's, there's Japanese makers out there, again, that use the knife. Same sort of way that I do for the planing cuts, for cleaning up edges. Uh, and with some patience, You can bevel corners with it as well. Um, I do have another one. Um, I have this one, um, which is left-handed. So to show you the difference between the right-handed and the left-handed ones, you can see the handles on the other side. Um, this this handle sits really nice in the hand here and puts the blade directly under your fingers. Whereas if it's the other way round, you can see where it sits. It, it doesn't work so well so I can move it and use it like this but it's not as comfortable plus when you're doing the upright cuts you 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 want the the one you want to be pulling from in front of the blade so my hand is is in front of the blade and the back of the blade is sort of trailing if you do this your hand is in line with the back corner and the front um, can wander a bit and it's much harder to, to steer it so that's why they offset it to the one side so you can um, you can control that cut a lot better 
and it fits in your hand a lot nicer for doing the um, the skiving. But this one I got left handed uh, because um, this is the small uh, angled one and the reason I got this left handed is I don't actually use it um, like you would this one in the same way. Uh, this one is specifically for cutting curves for me so a lot of my designs have um, curves in them and these are cut freehand using this knife and I do that by actually holding it like a pen um, so much for I actually hold the blade much further down and it's easier in this grip to keep this back upright um, and obviously I want the point trailing so I got the left handed version uh, like you can see and then I can cut my curves really quite precisely with this one but if I was using this to actually trim with um, it's it's wrong handed I'd have to force my wrist into an upright position like this and try and keep it upright as I move my elbow and it just turns your wrist more and more as, as you pull back and it's just really awkward so that's why uh, most people see this and think it's a left handed knife because the, the most leather knives that are sort of um, western leather knives the flat is the bit that you put against what you want to keep because you want a fully perpendicular line and for something that's a small like um, clicker knife or something where you've got like a point and you're just more dragging it it's easier to keep um, keep it upright and get that square corner that square edge so yeah that's that's my two knives these are the only two knives that I have um, and like I say most people can get away with just this one I use this one because I find it easier to get the curves this one could cut curves um, just a lot more it's, it, it's just more difficult than this one I find for, for me for the way that I use them um, so yeah it's a really versatile knife and there's, a, like, there's not one way of holding it um, but the way that it cuts in general for all my like general cutting out of pieces and trimming and stuff is, is upright like this and just cutting. Um, so yeah I hope that explains how this knife is actually used, or how I use this knife I should say. Because um, without a demonstration um, it, it's quite an odd looking knife. Your handle's here if you held it like a normal knife you'd want to hold it like this and you'd expect your edge to be down here um, and but your your edge is perpendicular to your handle so you, you're looking at holding it like this or like this or for the trimming stuff like this um, and there's uh there's some cool videos of um cordwainers out there who use a japanese knife for cutting in where these, so the, they have to cut a line in the edge of a sole to then pull the leather back to stitch the sole on and then glue the leather back down so you don't have stitches on the bottom of your shoe and there's a they hold there's, there's videos of them holding it like this and running it down the edge to take off just the tiniest little sliver of the of the top so they can bend it back to get the stitch line underneath um, it's same sort of way that I hold it to do the the edge shaving. So yeah, thanks for watching. Sorry for rambling on, uh, but hopefully that will explain how this knife is actually used to those who have never seen one, uh, and then when they do see one, have absolutely no idea how it's meant to be used. <laughs>